Hey guys, Zen up here, and today we're going to be talking about some of the things that you need to know when you're coming to Staircase in the Olympic Mountains. First thing you're going to need to know is that it's going to cost you some money. $30 just for an entrance fee to Olympic National Parks, and that's good for seven days. Now, it does cover all of these areas. When you're driving up, you're going to see an entrance booth. If it's manned, then you're going to pay your $30 there. If it's not, then you're going to come to one of these little bulletin boards and you're going to fill out an envelope. It's going to have all of the information you need for your vehicle. As you can see here, the fee is required unless you have one of these passes here. If you just have the Washington State Discovery Pass or the Northwest Forest Pass, they do not apply to a national park. Those are state parks. Somewhere you're going to see a little bin like this. You're going to take your envelope throw it in there and then jiggle this up and down until it gets all the way inside the box. Now if you want to stay at the staircase campgrounds you're gonna to have to pay another fee. The fee for camping at the staircase campgrounds is $20 per night. That can be in cash, check, or credit card. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna drive around the campsites and you're gonna find one that has nobody in it. You're going to leave something there, a chair, a car, something. Then you're going to notate whatever number that campsite is. Come back here, then you're going to fill out one of these little forms here. And on here you're going to put your campsite number, what days you're checking in, checking out, how many nights you paid for, and total amount paid. Your name, vehicle license number, and state. On the back here are more things you have to fill out campsite number, nice paid for, all that stuff. You basically enter all this information in again. This one is your receipt. This one you put on the display board in your open spot. That way everybody else knows that spot's already paid for and taken. Once again when you have your envelope filled out full of money you stick it in this box. Extra rules you need to know about maximum of eight people per site, two vehicles, Park all vehicles with wheels on the paved road or gravel pad. And campsites property may not be left unattended for more than 24 hours. So you can't come set up a base camp here, go hike up to Big Log for two days, and then come back because nobody was here in that 24 hour period. Other rules you need to know for the campground. Quiet hours are from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Can't use generators or radios that are really loud during that time. Food storage, any food or scented items like your lotions and your sprays, any pet food must be secured from the wildlife in an animal proof locker or in your vehicle when not in use. Campfires and firewood, you have to be near your fire when you have a fire. That's just smart. Fire is only permitted in the little grill grate areas and you have to extinguish them before you leave. Also, firewood may not be collected in the campground area or within a quarter mile of the campground, but they do have firewood for sale. You gotta keep your pets on a leash, can't take them on the trails, and you gotta clean up after them after they do their duty. There are critters around right here, so you gotta keep all your trash in your vehicle or put it in the dumpster, don't bury or burn it. The last thing to know is firearms and weapons. You can bring your firearm onto the national park as long as you're following state law. Cannot discharge your firearm and having any other projectile type weapon like a slingshot or a bow and arrow is prohibited. If you want to go hiking on the trails around staircase, a few rules here too. First off, pets, weapon use, bicycles, vehicles are prohibited in the backcountry. If you have a group more than 12 people, you got to split them up into two distinct groups. They got to be about a mile apart and you can't ever group together while out in the backcountry. Campfires are prohibited above 3,500 feet, so you can only use the camping stoves. If you want to go out into the backcountry, wilderness permits are required for overnight stays. 
fishing licenses are not required within the Olympics, but a salmon and steelhead punch card is required. Now, if you want to overnight, there are permits required. Lift this up and you will see the permit and the payment envelope. Now, this payment envelope does not get left here. When you're done, you put your stamp on, return address, and mail your fee to the state. There are some camping areas that require registration. Some of them are like Royal Basin, Lake Constance, Upper Lena Lake, Flapjack Lakes. Those have a limited amount of spaces, so you do have to request a registration. Now, it doesn't say it here, but I have heard it can take up to three weeks for your registration to be processed. So get that in early. And for more information about reservations and permits, you can contact the Wilderness Information Center at this number here. If you wanted to, you can do your wilderness permits and I believe reservations in person at these following areas. Actual bear canisters are required for overnight camping between Pirates Creek and O'Neill Pass. There is no cell phone service out here. Which is awesome. That's all I have for this video. As always, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Click that bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. Check us out on the website, and we'll see you guys on the next one.